All right, a while back I did a video on frame rate or packet rate consistency and how critical that is in good flight performance. But packet rate consistency is only one part of the picture. There's also end-to-end -end latency from gimbal to flight controller. And in addition, the testing that I used for that wasn't exactly in a controlled environment. It was different logs with that beta flight debug mode, which is revealing and we're seeing about the same results. Nevertheless, we wanted to tighten up with the control and some testing, get some end-to-end -end latency, again, from gimbal to flight controller, and see what we find out. So now, big thanks to the Express LRS devs. There's a new tool out there that we can use with the ESP development board, and we can measure end-to-end -end packet rate delay and also frame rate. So let me show you this new tool, how you can download it, get it, how you set it up, and it'll set the basis for some of the testing myself and Alessandro from the Express LRS project have been doing on the various modules, Ghost, Tracer, Crossfire, Express LRS, 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, all kinds of good stuff. So to find this open source, if you just go to Google and type in Express LRS, you can go down here and hit on the Express LRS project. That will take you to the Express LRS repo, but we actually want to get out of this repository and go in just to the everything that's under Express LRS. And you can see under here, this is RC latency tester. And this would be the code right here, which we can download. This is my garbage drawing of the wiring diagram, trying to figure it out. But essentially, let's just take a look at this uh, garbage drawing. Nevertheless, it uh, conveys what we need to do. So with this, there's a couple things you need to wire up. The first thing we're going to look at is taking it from the D0 pin of the ESP development board, which if you don't know what that looks like, this is an ESP development board. It's actually what is used in the back of all the Express LRS things. And you can see it's just a, a uh, pretty straightforward board. If you actually look at the Express LRS chipset, so this is an Express LRS receiver or transmitter, you can see the similarities. It's actually the same board that's used in the back of that uh, without the glare from my, my lamp here. But uh, so we're going to use that uh, board and you can use this for all kinds of projects. Pavel Mikulski is using the ESP boards. It's just, it's a really versatile board. So we're going to go from that again, that D0 pin right here. And if we look on my drawing here, we're gonna take that and we're gonna wire it straight into the circuit board of the transmitter. So for that, you wanna splice into the throttle wire. So in the transmitter, I don't have it taken apart, but you would just open up your transmitter here. There's a voltage, a ground, and a signal wire coming from each gimbal. There's actually two of them. One is for, for this movement and then another one for this movement as well. So you would splice into the one that is for the throttle and take that signal. And what I have here is that when you just plug in this head jack, that it actually is getting the throttle from this cable now. So it's taking it from this cable directly in to the circuit board on the transmitter. And when the cable is unplugged, now it's getting the throttle right from the transmitter itself. So this is a three millimeter headphone jack, um, makes a connection one way, then makes a connection the other way when you plug it in or reverse it's not being plugged in. You wanna do the same thing for the ground. So you wanna take some ground on the circuit board for the transmitter and you wanna bring that back just so you have a common ground across the test. So that is gonna be feeding a pulse to the throttle and then that's gonna you know, obviously get transmitted over to the receiver here. The receiver, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna have a ground five volt source and then we're gonna read when that signal comes in on the D7 pin and then this USB is connected to your PC to monitor it. As of right now, you can test any of the protocols for Crossfire, Ghost. Uh, Alessandro is working to get SBUS. Hopefully he has that done this week and we can test it at SBUS because there's a lot of things that use SBUS. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This would be the output data you would get. So this would be the sample. It sends 500 samples. Obviously this is open source. You can just edit, you can send millions of samples if you want. And uh, this is gonna be the end-to-end -end latency. It's measured in microseconds. And then this is gonna be the packet length for that exact packet that it's talking about uh, and how many microseconds that is. So this is, you know, a thousand microseconds is four milliseconds. This is 4.39 milliseconds end-to-end. -end. You can see this packet was 8.174 milliseconds end to end, and that the frame or the packet length itself was 4.011 milliseconds. 
So you can see that coming down through here, imagine that for 500 samples. To get this downloaded, uh, you would just come to the repo itself, go under code, and then copy this link. So just gonna go ahead and copy that link. The next program you'd wanna have installed is Get Desktop, at least what I that's what I use. You can do this multiple ways, but this is my dummy num approach. I'm sure the computer programming guys, well, I do some programming code too. This is the, the, the approach I use. I'm sure there's probably more efficient ways. But uh, I like to use uh, GitHub Desktop. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just Google GitHub Desktop and download this program. In here, you would just go under Clone Repository, go under URL, paste that, and then give this a location. So you'd probably want to have this as you know, something like Express, I don't know, Test. I'll just give it a different name here for just for now. And uh, you know, put it some location on your computer. They usually recommend uh, if you're running Docker or other things, mostly a beta flight thing, you'd want to have this under your user directory for a Windows system. I don't think it matters for this specific code in this test, so you could probably just put this anywhere and uh, just hit clone. That will go ahead and download the code from GitHub and put it on your computer. You can see now we have it here. What's nice about this is then if there's updates along the way, you can just hit this button here and it will re-download the new code. So as things improve on it, uh, you can get the new code. You don't have to like recopy it down. It just kind of like links it and then you can hit this and it will download it whenever you need to. And you can see under history here, what are the, the commits changes and so on and so forth. After that, you will want to have the program called Visual Studio Code. And this is just a coding platform to, you know, the Express LRS devs use this. Beta, most of the Betaflight devs use this. A lot of open source uh, folks and, and private programmers use this. Uh, so you can go ahead and just Google, you know, Visual Studio and uh, go ahead and download that. You can see what I have here. Uh, you want to add the extension uh, platform IO and a lot of the details about Visual Studio Code and, and getting some of this stuff I covered under my Express LRS video. So I'll make a link to that in the upper right. Check that out. And uh, that can give you some more details like how to add the platform IO plugin. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and assume, you know, if you're if you're doing this, you're pretty adept with some things. So I'm just going to give a glossary cover of this. So nevertheless, with platform IO, you want to go ahead and open the project. And for opening the project, we're going to browse into my user folder here where I have all that and just keep drilling down here. I have it under get and then I have mine under express LRS. So I'll just click under there, hit the code test. And then from here, just hit open once you're on the um, RC latency tester directory that will open that up and here's all the code there's a couple protocols that you can run again ghost crossfire uh, sbus once that's made available and the srxl2 so that's under the main cpi right here so if you want to you know do ghost you would just comment uh, crossfire out and uh, you know add in ghost and that will activate that from there you just go ahead and plug in your ESP32 board, so go ahead and do that. And then uh, once you have whichever protocol you want, which I'm gonna actually go ahead and put Crossfire back on, you're gonna go ahead and save that file. So you just press Control S to save it. And then you're going to come down under the platform IO and hit upload and monitor. That will connect to your ESP32 uh, board. You may need to install a driver uh, for those. So if you are going through this and you need some help with installing the driver for your computer for the ESP32, let me know. Uh, but ultimately, you can see it's going to upload the code and then kind of sit there and wait for the uh, board to be activated. Now the final step is I'm going to take my transmitter. I'm going to plug in my one connection to the transmitter itself. So that is going to send the signal to the throttle here and override. So this gimbal is actually useless now for a throttle at least it's getting the signal from here that's going into the, the circuit board on here. And then what I do is I have the other end also a, a plug here. So I'm going to take that and I have that wired up as you can see here as well. So I can just plug that directly in here. So now I made the connection there. So you can kind of see the setup here. The, uh, this is just the power to the receiver. This is the signal that it's reading from the receiver. And then these over these two over here 
are the signal coming to that DO1 and then the ground uh, coming to a ground pin. So a grounded signal. The ground is the signal is going to the transmitter. The ground is just grounding the transmitter to be the it's common ground with this circuit board, which is then also the common ground to the receiver here, which has 5 volt power, ground, and then the signal wire here. So that's that's a little janky setup there, but hey, it works. After that, it's pretty straightforward. How it's coded up is there's two buttons on here. There's a flash and a reset button. If I hit the reset button, you can see it just kind of resets it and gets it ready. And if I hit the flash button, it will start doing the test. So you can see now it's gonna run for as many samples as I set it. You can come up to the code here and uh, set however many samples you want uh, right here. Number of samples, number of tests. So I could add another zero if I wanted to and hit save and then hit re-upload and monitor and then it would put in the new code compiled into the ESP32 board and run 5,000 tests, which you can see would take quite a bit of time. I want you to see uh, as this is running, what it is doing, it's it's sending like a signal and they're about, I don't know, half a second apart. Yeah, half, maybe a quarter second apart. I'd have to look, it's, it's in the code somewhere. But it's, it's sending a signal. It's not, you know, sending the signals as fast as it can. Obviously, a, vari a barrage of signals would just, you could do 500 signals, no time flat. But it's, uh, it's, sending a, it's sending a pulse, it's waiting, it's sending another pulse, it's waiting. So it's, it's doing them kind of, of a, as a deliberate packet, you know, packet, 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 packet. And then it's measuring the difference in time it takes for it to get from the transmitter over the air into the receiver and then how long does it take before it detected that. Once it is all done, uh, you will see this down here, you'll see the actual average, but ultimately you can grab this data and just bring it up to the top here, kind of select all that and you can, can control C to grab that. You can't right click on it, it will deselect it. And then just uh, bring that into notepad of course, so I can paste that in notepad and then save that notepad file, and then you can open that with Excel, uh, comma delineated, and then it will put it into three columns, and then once you're in Excel, you can graph it and do all kinds of stuff. Ultimately, you can do a bunch of tests and get a bunch of data, and then you can compare, uh, you can compare things like ExpressRS to Ghost, to TBS Tracer, to Crossfire, to Express uh, 900 megahertz, and much more. I'm hopeful to do some testing on uh, R9, ACCST, R9 Access, and then FR Sky has a race mode receiver, but we still need that SBUS protocol to be working, so that is still in the operation. Uh, ultimately, I'm gonna do a video on reviewing all this data. I'd like to see if we can get the SBUS stuff in there in the meantime, but I wanted to put together this video so you understand the testing procedures, the protocol, what's doing, and also you can run the test yourself. That ESP board is, I think, like 10 bucks. It's not expensive. Uh, I showed the wiring. Um, you can just buy a, tr a receiver, transmitter, wire it all up, and run the test. More importantly, if you're interested in contributing to this latency tester uh, code and kind of adding to it, adding more protocols to it, because there's a lot more out there. There's Futaba, there's Spectrum protocols, all kinds of stuff. Um, maybe streamlining, you know, how, it's, how it works so you don't have to compile it in the uh, program, you know, VS code itself, whatever is your desire. I'm sure Alessandro would love the assistance and now you know it's out there. Thanks everybody and I hope this helped. And like smash that like button, please. Cause then I, if, if you guys get me a billion likes, then I can make videos that are Fortnite. So do you want Fortnite videos or this video? What's better?